the first game, which will be on Saturday, and it's the third fourth place playoff. That means they both got beat in the semi final, but there's still an opportunity for us to find winners. It's Croatia versus Morocco. Croatia are massive at plus 135. If this was a quarterfinal game, you'd probably see Croatia at minus 115. Morocco at plus 200. First of all, Morocco are involved. Let's have a little look. Under two and a half at minus 105. Again, if this was a quarterfinal game or a round of 16, that total, Marco here, would be at two. Morocco are at plus 170 to score twice. Croatia are plus 145 to score twice. That's telling us straight away that we're not expecting either side to score twice. Yeah, I mean, I think that you've sort of teed up quite nicely for me. And I know I'm a bit of a lone wolf in, in where I'm attacking this game in terms of a best bet. But um, th the fact is, it's not a World Cup quarterfinal. It's not even a World Cup group stage game. These two played out a goalless draw when the, the tournament started back in uh, late November. Um, this is a meaningless match, which uh, is kind of the game that no one really wants to play in. Um, you're going to have sort of frontline stars who are probably tired emotionally and physically and probably just want to get back to their clubs now. You're going to have other players in the squad who haven't played a minute at all in this competition who will want to be on the on the team sheet for this. So it's a bit of a weird one, really. Um, and I think you've got to treat it as a completely separate game to what we've seen before us because of that. Um, so, yeah, while these two teams played out a nil-nil draw and whilst everything we've seen before us suggests it will be tight, cagey, uh, Morocco sitting back, defending and, and sort of inviting Croatia on and Croatia not having a huge amount in forward areas to to really hurt most teams. Uh, I just think this game sort of lends itself, the third place playoff that is, um, to a bit of sort of wild, out of control football, um, chaos if you like, because um, you're going to have, well, we, we just don't know the teams at the minute and that's a bit of a red herring anyway, but uh, if these two teams do make changes, I mean Morocco certainly will have to because, you know, Regraoui picked, what was it, three of his first choice, four defenders and a new look back five system. One didn't even make the, the starting lineup. Um, his captain size was withdrawn within 20 minutes, um, as Rowie didn't make the second half. So you, you assume that all three are either going to be very close to missing out or, or certainly not involved. Uh, Reg Rowie said himself that all of his basically frontline stars after the game against France were running on 60 and 70 percent. And, and there's just no way they can compete with that kind of calibre of opposition when they're, they're struggling for sort of full fitness. Um, you take the emotional baggage as well, which come with it. And uh, I just can't see Morocco being anywhere close to being full strength defensively. And I just think this gives them an opportunity to, to release the shackles a little bit and play with a bit of freedom, really. They've already done themselves and, and their continent hugely proud. And um, I think they'll be keen, obviously, to make a, an impact on this game and obviously pick up a medal, which would be hugely historic. But, um, you know, Croatia are no mugs either, and, and they've been in this position before. So um, they've got issues themselves. I think Brozovic is a doubt after going off early in, in their own semi-final two which would disrupt that midfield trinity. I think Modric will play, considering it's his, probably his last game for Croatia. Uh, I expect um, Perisic to play as well, but I expect them to make massive changes elsewhere too. And and Gavardiol is, is certainly one of those who's, who's a doubt as well. So, you know, it's difficult to make massive judgments without knowing the team sheets right now. But I think it's fair to say there will be a, an element of change, rest and rotation within these squads. And for that reason, I think um, the fact that there's no jeopardy involved in this game at all, we can go out and enjoy themselves. I have a feeling it might follow the trends and narratives of uh, previous third-place playoff games. So across the last 11, 10 of them have featured over two and a half goals. And the only game that didn't was England's game against Belgium four years ago. They ended 2-0. Uh, Belgium picked a, a first-choice 11 that day. England definitely didn't. Um, of those 11 third-place playoff games, eight saw both teams scoring. Six went over three and a half goals. And the average goals per game was standing at 3.36. So... Um, Obviously, it entails or involves Morocco potentially ripping up the playbook, which I'm not s saying they definitely will do, but there's no real reason for them to sort of line up in a defensive wall as they have done throughout this competition. And look, there is plenty of flair, plenty of invention in that squad already. We saw that in the second half against France. Very unfortunate not to get a, a goal in that game. Uh, and Croatia, I think, will certainly enjoy the more extra and open spaces themselves. So I'm happy to cheer on goals in this game. It just tends to be the way. I would almost back it blindly in this particular fixture. Yeah, see, I think everything you say um, holds water, to be honest. But you've got Morocco in there. Morocco's third place uh, medal will be a, just uh, like a dream and it will go down in history. Um, with Morocco, I think that we can start thinking about them joining the top table of, Euro of uh, world teams, Kev, because they have got the nucleus to keep going and they may well be dangerous in four years' time. Um I've got this probably going all the way because I think it means more to Morocco than it does Croatia. 
I think it means a lot to both, actually. I, I'm always slightly nervous when I disagree with Mark about anything. But I, I think on this occasion, my feeling is that, and you've just touched on it there, Flash, this means a lot, I think, to both teams because I know Croatia obviously went on to reach the final four years ago. But this is a team that represents a country with a relatively small population that has done incredibly well to compete in the way that they have in recent tournaments. And I think finishing third would mean a lot to this group. Be a great way for Modric to go out, not the way that he wanted to, but it would be a good way for him to go out. And for Morocco, you know, if they could finish third, they've already become the first African team to reach the semi-finals. They could become the first African team to finish third in a World Cup. I think that would mean an enormous amount to them. I don't think the coach will change it particularly. They're not, they're very good defensively, but they're not a defensive team in the sense that they do progress the ball. They do hit you on the counter. But I think they will look to try and shut down that Croatian midfield. I, I think the other thing as well is, let's be honest, the strikers aren't very good on either team, really. We saw Morocco um, once El Naziri went off. Um, Hamdala found it really difficult I uh, had a couple of big chances and made a mess of both of them and Petkovic uh, yes he got the goal against Brazil but he's not the classiest of players he's not the Deflection. deadliest of finishers either so yeah. you know and even Kramaric who I like very much and has scored lots of goals for Hoffenheim in Germany is he somebody you can hang your hat on at this level I'm not sure he is so for me I was surprised to see Unders trading at minus 105 I think that's about right. That's an attractive price to me. Yeah, I don't see three goals neither. Um, I like. I think the draw is a massive runner at plus 250. Uh, I think that both of these could well cancel each other out. And the other thing we've got to think about is these two, without generalising, could well have produced the most energetic performances. I mean, Croatia have only used 15 men. Morocco play a game and a half in every 90, 95 minutes. Um, just by the style of their play, the, the energy, the enthusiasm. I'm just wondering how refreshed some of these players are going to be. Are, are, there, are some players going to come in and this is going to be the first time they kick a ball? So we could see a disjointed game. So that means oh. that, again, we don't want to go behind. Um, That's okay. my worry, Let's... Flash, is, is the fact that, uh, as well, compared to the final... Morocco are coming off uh, a Wednesday night game towards a, a Saturday yeah, afternoon match. Fresh. That's a that's a very quick turnaround for a team who've been to the wall, you know, physically and emotionally in the last couple of weeks. You know. Yeah, and and to back you also, Mark. Obviously, I I think that this goes all all the way, and I couldn't split them. But to back you, how many of these Croatians is their last like uh, like foray on the big scene? I mean, uh, Brozovic, is he going to be there in four years' time? Modric, we know no. Lovren Perisic, might be as well. So. Lovren. L do you know what I mean? There's been so many of them that this is the the, uh, the fat lady is already singing. So they might have to, to leave the stage and they'll probably want to leave it with a medal. That's why I, I couldn't split them. Um, I've, just gone with, I've just gone with maybe uh, the penalties, I think. Let's have a little look also because we've got another set of uh, captions on the see like the draw half time or Croatia to be le leading at halftime is at plus 205. Morocco is at plus 270. The halftime draw, which has been very popular throughout every single game, regardless of opposition for uh, for nearly every single fixture. Halftime draw is at plus 105. Under or over eight and a half corners. There's another one that neither of these sides have been producing many corners. Kev, any numbers there? Both teams to score no is at plus 110. I quite like the 1-1 uh, one, one draw. Quite like the half-time draw. I, I think there might be a bit of caginess here. I, I totally accept what Mark says about the, you know, you look at the trends of this fixture. Absolutely, you'd think if you were going to back blindly, you'd go for goals. The only difference is, I, I think here, normally what you've got is, is teams at this stage who are only interested in winning the thing. And obviously, everybody's interested in winning the thing. But their main aim was, let's win the thing. Oh, we didn't win it. So they gutted by this stage. Obviously, Croatia and Morocco wanted to win the thing and wanted to get to the final. But there's such pride in what they've done already that I can't see that suddenly going out of the window. I can't see that desire 
to represent their respective countries in the way that they have. I can't see them junking that here. And I think you've got two good goalkeepers as well. Ivakovic is in the form of his life um, for Croatia. has played well for Dinamo Zagreb. Bono, we know, is a terrific goalkeeper, was voted La Liga's best goalkeeper last season. He's been a big part of what Sevilla have done in recent seasons. So, half-time draw at plus 105, I think that's absolutely fine. Mark, I know this is obviously a market that we don't normally talk about, but it did come up in the Argentina-Croatia semi-final. It's both teams to score an over no, which obviously then brings in the minimum of Croatia win 3-0, and it's plus 900. (laughs) <laughs> um, I mean, it's possible. Of course it is. Um, as I say, Morocco, very quick turnaround for them. Uh, possibly about three of their, their frontline defenders. Um, there might be rotation elsewhere if players like Amrabat are, are out on their knees, really, after what's been an, an incredible campaign. Um, it's very difficult to sort of bet with confidence at this stage without knowing the team sheets. And we, we won't get that till sort of 90 minutes before kickoff, which is unhelpful, I know. But um for an interest bet, that's that's the way I'm approaching this. It definitely would be to be with goals. And I know I'm a lone wolf in that regard, but I'd, I'd be much more inclined to back the plus 110 on BTTS uh, and over two and a half and sort of take the opposing view. I, I mean, what about the draw at plus 105 at half time, Or would you fancy that one of these... Because, look, you're getting plus 205 or plus 270 for either of these sides to uh, be leading at half time. Yeah, I'd, I'd be more pro-Croatia rather than sort of taking a half time draw. Um they are a bigger price than they were in the first game back in uh, what was the end of November. And as we say, you know, Morocco could be a lot weaker than they were back then as well. And uh, I take everything you guys are saying, um, and I, I, I certainly agree. But he's going to throw it out the window, Kev. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to everything. That's the old Brian Clough one, isn't it? Uh, we sit down and we chat for 20 minutes, and then we decide that I was right all along. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, this is why we love football. There's so many different opinions, and I could be made to look a fool at the weekend when it ends nil nil or one one or whatever. But um, I just think the sense that there is no jeopardy in this match it doesn't really mean a huge amount by getting a bronze medal. Um, it does. It does mean this is a completely different mindset to take. Uh, I know with Ragrawi and his squad will be thinking, let's try and get third place. We've already achieved something historic. But mentally, as an individual, surely there's something. You're not quite 100% going into this game because you're not playing in the big one. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that just allows the game to be a bit more loose. And I think we will see a bit more of a. Uh, uh, I'm not saying they're going to completely release the shackles, but I just think Morocco will play with a bit more. Um, Intent, if you like. Um, I don't think they will be quite as, you know, uh, defensively resolute as they were against the likes of Belgium, um, Spain, and Portugal in the knockout stages too. So, this is their opportunity to kind of release those shackles and allow their real flair players to take a real hold of things, rather than sort of getting Ziyech and and Co to be defending quite deep. So, yeah, I, I might be proven to be completely wrong in this game, but uh, I just think it's an opportunity to kind of ignore what we've seen so far in the past few weeks because the 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 match itself allows that yeah i tell you the other thing we've got to mention is uh 85 percent of the crowd are going to be uh obviously of arab uh descent so then are we thinking that this is a morocco coming out party is this a uh thank you is it going to be partisan is it going to be just a feel good of listen we're so proud and it could be that it's just I don't know, just a very, very spectacular um, event. Uh, I'm not going to talk about bookings. I want to talk about that in the final because that could be a real flip of a coin a job. So let's have a little look at the official picks because I've gone through uh, quite a few for you to give you some options. Uh, Marco here has gone over two and a half at minus 115. Uh, Kev's gone under two and a half at minus 15. And so have I. I think this is nil nil, one one. And if I'm happy, um, I'd be happy if someone basically uh, gets an extra time winner because there's the other one. Do they really want extra time in the third and fourth place playoff? Uh, but you can have the draw on Bet US after 75 minutes and not worry about that. Okay, I've also gone with draw and under. See, Mark O'Hare, look, see, you rubbed off on me. You did this earlier on in the tournament, and I thought this is the game where this could happen. Draw and under two and a half. So that's nil nil or one one. At plus 325, Morocco to finish third at plus 115. Um, I will be cheering you, uh, Kev, because my next two selections, look at me. I've got my arm around both of you. Croatia to win on penalties at plus 1,000. And Morocco to win on penalties at plus 1,000. I love going to a penalty shootout when I don't care 
I just do not care. I put the telly, turn the sound up, go and put the kettle on, get a biscuit, and then just know that I've uh, cleared a plus 900. Okay.